emancipation is long overdue. So it becomes procrastination, because freedom is within you. For some reason, we think we're free, so we'll never be, because we haven't recognized slavery. You sell a slave, look at how you behave, debating on where and when and how and what master gave. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Tyranny, a weekly show about authoritarianism, government overreach, and global injustice. Today is Friday, March 24th. This is episode 16 of This Week in Tyranny. I am your host, Conrad Rogas. You can find all my work at my website, truthandlaw.com. Before I begin, I'd just like to say that I'm going to switch up the titles. Uh, This is still This Week in Tyranny, but I will make the titles from now on having to do directly with what I'm talking about. And the reason is, has to do with the whole reason I started doing the series in the first place is to reach out to the people who are looking on YouTube, looking on the internet for what's going on now. Otherwise, I won't be reaching them because when people see the title This Week in Tyranny, it is, uh, like my friend said, it is not really a dinner table topic of discussion. And that's why the amount of people that want to click on something like this is small. And therefore, the knowledge that we have is, is coming from we don't have this kind of knowledge spreading throughout the people so let's now go into the topics i will have two different topics very uh, varying ones different ones number one is the recent school shooting in denver where austin lyo age 17 he wounded two uh, workers at at the school school employees so another school shooting in the united states right but this one is different and what is going on here really with with this school shooting as opposed to the other ones uh what i want to talk about is the tyranny of violence because not all the tyranny in the world is coming from the government not all of the tyranny is coming from the top down i mentioned this sometimes but i should talk about it more is that we play a role in the tyranny that's going on and a lot of this we the people are doing it right so we're we're to blame as well so it's not about just blaming finger pointing at somebody above us and something like this with with this school shooting um, and the school shootings in general i've talked about these topics a little bit the thing about it is there are no easy answers as far as what's going on with the government what to do about monetary financial policy what to do about laws the answers are very easy it all has to do with Uh, basic principles of anarchy and and natural law right but with this with the school shootings there's actually no easy answers because what are you going to do are you going to arm the teachers arm the school employees well now basically you're creating like a military school or tyrannical prison environment right Uh, what are you going to do are you going to homeschool your kids well isn't that avoidance right and fear and avoidance and you're going to now run away from the problem when the problem still exists in society it's really not that easy and uh, when i have spoken about school shootings i've highlighted that the the main outcome they want to get done here the government me that they want to get done is to get our guns they want gun confiscation Uh, but as far as the actual route here and to focus on of course the victims of violence which i try to do in all of my work well it's not this isn't just a political um this isn't just a political operation right these things are happening and they're big problems in society so what are the roots of violence i'm not going to give you the whole two and a half hour presentation that i gave in babyface criminality but violence has its roots in poor moral education and psychological issues right which could be bullying as well but it's bad programming that went into the individual as a child that now manifests itself in the adult life and cut a long story short who's responsible for this right who's responsible for poor moral education well yeah we say the parents right we say the parents are to blame for raising school shooters but i want to go deeper with this question and and really point the finger where it should be pointed well who is steering our society who is in charge of the moral education the way it is now right and this is top down and this has to do with government so yeah i am going to point the finger at government as well 
these people they they pay whoever decides the curriculum you know and the society we have now it, it's a function of you know money government uh, religious systems which are partnered with government because they don't pay taxes uh, what we get filtered through the media which of course answers to government this has come out now so who, who's responsible for this other than of course the parents it is government right and while we have this happening another tragedy in another school shooting the government is obsessed with gun control they're going full speed ahead and i mentioned this before that they just can't wait they won't even pay respects to the victims really they're just going straight to gun control straight to shooting those that legislation through supporting it and putting pressure on on the uh small time um law makers right the policy makers to get stuff done and they're putting pressure on them while the children are still suffering because this isn't getting at the cause of factors this isn't getting at the real issues and causes of gun violence right and in this case in denver colorado there actually were protective measures taken uh, because austin lyle the shooter he did have some issues right so the protective measures they failed uh he had he was patted down daily they had some kind of uh some kind of an arrangement w with him where he was clearly determined to be a, a dangerous so then he was patted down daily before he went into the school and then this occurred and then he ended up shooting the, sc the school up anyway so it was definitely ineffective and all that a pat down like that would do is just make him more effective at concealing it right you're getting patted down every day so he's not going to put the gun on his hip obviously if he's getting patted down there He's going to hide it in a way that's that's going to avoid that. And, and pat downs are pat downs are about uh, a mental, uh, psychological obedience. They're not actually an effective means of see, of finding a weapon on somebody. It's so easy to to beat a pat down. It's actually just it's actually a a mental a show of force to have somebody spread their legs and you're gonna pat down down it's it's really about control and about dominance right it's more control and dominance and, and bullying which is what's causing these shooters in the first place um and people don't want to uh, talk about the idea that even if we go zero guns in america we get the guns taken away these would-be school shooters are just going to join the military and they're going to shoot people up in other places that's what will actually happen but you know until we can re-educate society morally until we can get ourselves back up raise ourselves to a position where kids aren't out there trying to kill other people well yeah the answer is to take the children out of the schools it is homeschooling and even if you're not going to homeschool them if i had children at this point i wouldn't send them to a public school i wouldn't do that anyway um i wouldn't say school was bad for me but i never learned any of this in school i never learned anything approaching you know real laws of the universe uh, all, all the education i did for myself will happen after i dropped out of high school and i was near the top of my class i never learned anything important in school all the social interactions you need you may have to sacrifice social interactions but a government has already proven uh I've mentioned the shooting in, in Uvalde where the cops were just waiting outside as the shooter was actively shooting at the kids. So the state has proven it can't protect your children. So take them out of the schools until it w can be shown otherwise. But as far as the impact of, of a tragedy like this, my message to people who are aware of false flags and aware of uh, the descent into tyranny let's not downplay school shootings right we can see the political agenda that as it tries to expose it and i mean exploit it and use it to uh, advance the gun control agenda right but let's not downplay school shootings because many school shootings there's a lot of talk about false flags right and many of these school shootings have those aspects to it but in my view this one wasn't this this had no kind of psyop aspect to it the way i see it because you didn't have a high death toll right 
that nobody died in this shooting except for Austin Lyle, who took his own life later as he escaped the scene, right? 50 miles away, they found him. So he didn't go and kill 15, 20 people. He shot two adults working at the school. So no high death toll. And as with most crimes on the street, there's a victim uh, shooter relationship, right? So, so it was the dean and uh, something like a social worker. So these are people that he had to do with it. There was an actual motive here. Like it was, a, it, these weren't random targets, right? And the weapon he used was a handgun with an extended magazine, right? So, um, well, he before was was seen. He had another weapon used here, but there's a history of him being, I believe, arrested. But he was caught with a handgun with an extended magazine. I believe. This is one of the incidents that uh, put him on a program that then led to him being patted down in the morning. So my point of mentioning it is uh, me when I see uh, when I saw people who are about his age, uh, people younger than me with guns. That's usually how it was. You had a handgun with an extended magazine. That's kind of uh, and that's what you're going to put on your social media and so forth. What I'm getting at is. It wasn't like the Columbine and the Sandy Hook shooters who had military rifles uh, and expensive, uh, well-equipped uh, military-type uh, battle rifles and firearms, right? This is something reasonable for for a 17-year-old to obtain. Uh, didn't have body armor and, and a night scope and extra magazines. He didn't seem to have like military training. That's what these other school shootings have a characteristics of and that's what makes them suspicious and and that's why the psyop aspect should be explored with those and um, so he also had I mentioned the prior history of violence and behavioral issues so did it, this school shooter didn't fall from from the sky he didn't come out of nowhere there were signs here right that's why I say this was in my view this was t a totally real un unprovoked event even though it did happen on march 22nd and 223 322 is uh has occult significance as numbers but this episode is not about that and on the picture they have of him he doesn't have that wide eye crazy look of you know adam lanza and the other school shooters um, this seems to be different but the conclusion to this is, to this story, we have to pay more attention to our children and keep them away from violence. Uh, and remember that if the more violence there is, the more the ruling class benefits. Because if there are more of these shootings, they, will, they now have more of a reason to pass their gun laws, which is the ultimate agenda. And uh, even if we don't talk about the guns, the, the, the gun control agenda... Um, just the fact of there being more violence makes us weaker as people as far as our understanding of natural law of morality of how we treat each other do we love each other or do we fear each other the more violence there is the more fear there will be but next this next story and uh, it seems like two totally different stories i'm going to connect them together in this episode is the protests in france because this has been gaining more and more steam of course the protests in france are about uh, President Macron raising the retirement age from 62 to 64. So they're taking two years off of the people's, uh, you know, pensions. Uh, he he says this is necessary to keep the system afloat. Basically, you know, we had economic stimulus uh, during the pandemic, all this blah blah inflation, and now they're gonna cut it down. They're gonna tighten the noose. But I wanted to mention about protesting first. I have to say I don't support protests. Uh, I'm not saying they're doing a bad thing, but there's a fine line between demanding things uh, that that demanding your rights, the, demanding uh, what is rightfully yours, which I totally agree with, and then what protesting usually is is just begging the master. I don't believe in any type of begging. Uh, I don't support any type of protesting. I support going and getting 
what you want, taking it w willfully. Okay, so, but since we are talking about protests in France, I saw that the people are calling for Macron to step down. They're calling for, you know, government reforms. They're in front of the city hall. I saw that they actually lit the door on fire to a city hall in Bordeaux in France. Um, to the French protesters, don't be worried about Macron because ultimately he's, he's not calling the shots when it comes to this. Uh, France has a central bank, okay? And the central bank has a governor and he has uh, been there since 2015. The, the former governor of the French French Central Bank served for 12 years, right? Um, and this one is in office for eight plus years already. And these people are not elected, right? So you didn't choose them, but this is who's making your decisions. And the governor, the leader of the French Central Bank is Francois Villeroy de Galao, okay? He's of the Banque de France. He's the he's the leader of your central bank in France. So when the pension system is allegedly supposed to collapse and they can't keep up with the with the uh, financial basically payments of debt and they have to delay retirement, the central bank's responsible for that, not whoever the president is. So if you're going to protest. Uh, protest the governor of the Banque de France, the member of the governing council for the European Central Bank, because not only does France have a central bank, right, which basically decides how much money the people get, decides rates uh, out of nowhere. They decide this this financial policy, right? They're basically the ones who are taking your money. If you wanted to point the finger at somebody, point it at the central bankers, because they're in control of the money, and in the end, the money's buying the politicians. And just look at yourself. Money's probably buying you. So, or, you know, your family and the people around you, at least. So European Central Bank, the, the French Central Bank, that's really where your protest should be directed at. Because Town Hall, what's Town Hall going to do? Town Hall is for interfacing with the slaves, right? That's for the ruling class to put their representative in front so that if you have a problem you could you go burn their house down and you yell at them but you don't yell at the at the real masters right that's what town hall is or the um, legislative building or the president's building that's what it is um so yeah i saw that the protests were near near the eiffel tower near some of the uh, the downtown area of paris but I just wanted to give the people some tips. If you're a protester in, in France, if you know somebody who's protesting in France, you guys are pretty close. But if I could share an address with you where I think you could go and, and have your grievances heard, uh, the bank, the Banque de France is at 1 Rue de la Vrière. Okay, it's across the street from the garden of the old royal palace in Paris. So they have the old royal palace. And... If you just go to the east of there, just across the street, uh, you have the Banque de France. It's at the, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's the uh, Toulouse Hotel or something like that. But anyway, it's east of the Garden of the Royal Palace. It's just a couple blocks down away from where the people are burning uh, stuff in the street. So if you go there, um, that's where Francois Villeroy de Galao, that's where he works. And that's where you should go to get your grievances heard it's a building that has two flags and it says banque de france on it so i think that would be a, that would be a good idea but if you do go there guess what guess what's just down the street from there just north of there across from the street half a block away is the gendarmerie national garde la publican right so there's that's basically a military base in paris in the city of paris a block away from the central bank is like an actual military base and if you look it up that they have the cavalry right there on horses and they're standing there with their swords and it's like real cute it's like i guess has to do with the old french army but what would actually happen if those protesters went to that central bank and they actually started to be a threat to the central bank from down the block from, from that national guard that that army base in downtown Paris, you're going to see the military come out with their rifles, modern military armed, and they're going to have the guns pointed at the people because 
if you tr if you actually push the central banks, you're you're gonna figure out who runs the, the world, and you're gonna figure out what people are gonna do for money, right? That's why when you're when the people are over there calling for uh, President Macron to resign, and they're calling for this and that, and they're mad at Congress, and they're mad at the president, they're laughing at you because down the block you've got the bank, and they're the ones who who are making all this happen, right? But you know, since the military base is right there, that probably may not be the best idea. So, me personally, if I was in if I was in France, um, that's only the French National Bank, right? Uh, but the French National Bank answers to the European Central Bank, and the European Central Bank makes the decisions for all the different European countries, right? Uh, and that, so if you want to go there, it's the ECB tower in uh in frankfurt germany right so it's ecb tower at sonnemannstrasse 20 the zip code being 60314 in frankfurt am main in germany so it's the east side of frankfurt in the ostend district and it's just north of the main river right if, if you want to go there it's a six hour drive from paris to frankfurt there's there's a big police presence right now in Paris. Nobody's expecting the people to go to Frankfurt. Six hour drive to Frankfurt or for less than 200 euros. You can catch a flight from Paris to Frankfurt. You'll be there in an hour and 15 minutes. And there are no military bases nearby in Frankfurt. And the Ostend police station is like at least a kill over a kilometer away. So that'll take them a couple minutes to get there. And since it is a tower, it's surrounded by like a large lot. So if you were to get 500 people on the east side where the police will come from, it would create quite a bit of a logistical problem for them. And since it is a tower, they got nowhere to go. I'd say that's a pretty good place to direct your grievances. And if you want to protest, which I'm not saying I support, but I'd say that's a good place to go. That's getting at the causal factors of your problems. Because that's who's taking your pension. That's who's attacking your country. A country's uh, economy it's not the president and the laws they're making they're just tightening the grip and it's all the central banks of the world here we have the federal reserve over there you got the banque de france and i've heard uh francois villeroy talk for like six hours today i was just playing his speeches to to figure out you know figure out who's really in charge here. and you could just listen to him talk these guys are such elitists they talk about it openly they talk about the financial policy they do all this talk about financial stability when you hear people talk about financial stability what they mean is financial control right it's about control of the money uh, they talk about this because they know you're not going to listen to them but they know that you are their slaves right so th that's where you should that's where you should um, go get your grievances heard. But about Francois Villeroy, last June actually, a man walked up behind them as he was uh, going to a meeting, walked up behind them and hit him in the back of the head with a hammer. This guy tried to kill him behind Francois Villeroy, right? There was not a, a lot of news about this, not a big news story at all, but it definitely happened and you could find this online. And he tried to kill this guy hit him with the back hit him in the back of the head with a hammer and what that shows you is why they want those american guns so bad and that that's how you tie these stories together the school shooting with the french protests it shows you why they want the guns so bad in america because that's how easily touchable these people are and if that man instead of a hammer he had access to even a uh, World War II era gone, there will be no more Francois Villeroy today. There will be one less central banker in the world. So that shows you uh, the, the main problem on the agenda. Problem one, the guns in America. That's what they want. Okay, But whether they get them or not, different story in the end. It's not the guns that protect us as the people, as the moral people. It is our understanding of morality, our connections with each other, right? Uh, our alignment to truth. That is the real protection we have in the universe. So that's what we need to be focused on. That is the message to you as I discuss the different things going on in the world. Yes, the tyranny is spreading. The tyranny is becoming very complicated. A lot of the people can't read between the lines. Uh, who else 
is saying stuff like this about the French protest and saying this about the school shootings. We're losing these voices. There are not many voices speaking the truth. And if there are, they're getting 20, 30 to 50 views. But uh, connecting that with me changing the titles and trying to get more people to see this, I mentioned that I listened for a few hours today while I was at work. I listened to Francois Villeroy talk about all these different keynote addresses he was talking in. One was at the Council of Foreign Relations. One was at the Banque de France. Uh, some kind of things he's invited to. And I see his speeches, they, they get like 20, 50 views, 100 views. So um, that that gives me some encouragement because the people don't want to hear the truth. And whether that's coming from uh, an occultist and an immoral person like him, uh, basically a white glove, white collar thief, and they don't want to hear the person exposing the thief and telling the truth. And that's where the people are. So uh, for every one of the handful of people that watches this show, thank you. I'm going to keep doing this. I will not be silenced. Yes, I am going to give addresses and names of people. Because I'm not calling for violence at all. I'm not the one doing that. I don't support protests. I support real action. Okay? So, I'm going to continue to take those real actions. And thank you very much for accompanying me. Thank you for your time and attention. And I'll see you next week on This Week in Tyranny. You either vote for the mumps or the measles. Whether you vote for the lesser of two evils, you vote for evil. Politics and God are not equal, but the education they get on God is really evil. People have more respect for a holy book than they do for a cow on a